We are set to go to what has been a very exciting start to the slow pitch softball World Series out in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Games one and two yesterday right here on ESPN. A split of the doubleheader. In the two games, Kentucky won the first 15 to five and Milwaukee came back to win the second 12 to two. Games three and four also in Milwaukee. Chilly night, great crowd on hand, ready for softball activity. Let's go to Joe Boyle and Johnny Blanchard. Men? Field in Lannan, Wisconsin. A good evening to you, everyone, and welcome to Game 3 of the American Professional Softball League World Series, the best five out of nine series. The two teams have split even so far. Tonight's game between Milwaukee and Kentucky is brought to you by Hilton Hotels Corporation, the makers of great weekends, and by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated of St. Louis, brewers of Michelob beer. Weekends were made for Michelob. I'm Joe Boyle, and along with former New York Yankee star John Blanchard, we're set to bring you the play-by-play -play action of games three and four tonight. And, John, last night, Kentucky and Milwaukee split. What do we look for tonight? Pretty much uh, Milwaukee manager Mike Basil said that he can look for pretty much the second game, the big win. Kentucky manager Steve Kaufman told me he said that it'll be a different ball game tonight. We'll just have to wait and see. Both teams expect to pull their fourth outfielder in, make a fifth infielder out of them. That's just one of the things we'll see tonight. We'll be back with the starting lineups for tonight's game in just a moment. Yeah, I think Peace Corps is a good thing because it's personal. It's people to people. It's given me a different perspective on the United States and America's role in the world. Uh, the past two years has been an incredible living experience, and it's something I'm not going to forget for sure. It may not be the easiest two years of your life, but it could be the most rewarding. Call toll-free 800-424-8580. Peace Corps, the toughest job you'll ever love. Jake's Field in Lannan, Wisconsin. My cohort on these broadcasts, John Blanchard, throwing out the ceremonial ball. Underhand, he's not bad. Overhand, I don't know if he's got it anymore. <laughs> we'll talk to him about that when he gets back upstairs. It's Milwaukee against Kentucky in game number three. Here's the Kentucky batting order for you. Let's take a look at it. Leading off, playing second base, Nick Nikitas. Batting in the number two spot, the third baseman, Don Reardon. Number three, Bill Gaddy, the catcher. Batting fourth, Cobby Harrison in right field. The number five hitter is Chuck Winders, the left fielder. Batting six, Dave Whitlock, the first baseman. The pitcher bats seventh, Phil Schreier. Number eight hitter is Jerry Fritz, the right fielder. Greg Whitlock, the shortstop, bats ninth. And Phil Cowdy, or Gowdy rather, the center fielder, the number 10 hitter in the order. Out on the mound for Milwaukee, it is Rich Weiderman. A record of 37 and 18 on the regular season. He has won one and lost one against Kentucky in this playoff. There he is, the leading hitter in the American Professional Slow Pitch Softball League this year. Rick with his pitching abilities also racked up a 5.57 average to win the batting title. Here's the leadoff man for Kentucky, Nikitas. 4.93 mark on the regular season. Four homers, 27 RBIs. The five-man infield for Milwaukee. First pitch at call strike. Our umpires tonight are Gary Ingram back of the plate. Ted Reel at first base. Felix Wingfield at second, and Pete Nary, the third base umpire. That will drop, and Kentucky gets their leadoff man on. And last night, Kentucky continually hit the ball up the middle, on the ground. As a matter of fact, in their first game last night, they had 25 hits, and all of them were singles. Not an extra base hit in the lot, but the manager for Kentucky, Steve Kaufman, says they plan a change in strategy tonight because the fifth infielder in the second game virtually cut off their hitting attack. They plan to try to loop the ball just like that. Fair down the right field line. The right fielder Janicek over after it. Reardon around second. He holds up there as the throw comes back into the infield. And Kentucky opens up strong with runners at second and third. Nikitas all the way around the third on the double by Don Reardon. Well, so far, Kentucky doing exactly what manager Steve Kaufman said they intended to do. Last night, they were hitting line shots. 
A foot or two off the ground, right back up the middle when Milwaukee brought in the fifth infielder. Derek Gallagher out back of the bag at second. You can see him, see him up, or you could just a moment ago see him up at the very top of your screen. It virtually cut off their attack, so they have gone airborne here so far in the top half of inning number one. This is Bill Gaddy, the catcher. Goes first ball hunting, shortstop there. Wenzel up with it, the long throw to first. He holds the runner and gets the batter. Fine play by shortstop Paul Wenzel. 6-3 on the play if you score. Here's Cobby Harrison. Harrison, the short fielder, right center fielder. He is the fifth infielder as far as Kentucky goes when he sets up defensively. There's his stats. Takes the first pitch in for a strike. Runners at second and third, one man out. Wiederman with several fakes. High fly ball left field. This should score a run. Left fielder Wagner there makes the catch. Nikita's tags at third. He'll come in to score. Holding at second base is Ridden. There are two gone, and Kentucky moves out in front. One nothing on the sacrifice fly by Cobby Harrison. So far, John, Kentucky has gone more to the looping line drives and to the ground ball type. Uh, attack they mustered last night. Well, Joe, that's uh, probably what uh, coach or manager of the ball club, Steve Kaufman, was telling me before the game. He said, you're going to see a different ball club take over tonight. Here's Chuck Winders. Saw his stats. Takes the first pitch short for a ball. If Winders gets on, Dave Whitlock could be the hitter. Shortstop Wenzel again, right through his legs. Reardon around third. He'll score as the throw comes back in. And on safely at first is Winders. First miscue of the game on the shortstop, Paul Wenzel. It appeared. Joe, that ball was really tagged. It stayed down on him. He, did, he didn't get out in front of it. He, the ball stayed on the ground, and he played the hop. So Kentucky with two runs in here. Here's Whitlock. This time, Wenzel handles it cleanly, takes the play himself, and that does it for Kentucky. But they come up with a couple of runs. On two hits, one Milwaukee error, and they leave a runner. After a half inning, the Kentucky Bourbons out in front of Milwaukee, two to nothing. Get a chance to set the Milwaukee batting order for you now that will face right-handed pitcher Phil Schreier for Kentucky. Schreier with a record of 40 and 8 on the regular season. Kentucky with a record of 48 and 15 on the regular season, won their division handily by 14 and a half games. Milwaukee had a scratch and scramble, 40 and 23 mark, and they won by just a half game over Detroit. Okay, let's take a look at that uh, Milwaukee batting order for you now. Leading off, left fielder Greg Wagner. Number two batter, Dennis Grazer, the first baseman. Batting third, Phil Higgins in center field. Jim Dillard, the catcher, batting in the cleanup spot. Number five hitter is Rick Weiterman, the pitcher. Batting sixth, Paul Wenzel, the shortstop. In the number seven slot is right fielder Dave Janicek. Batting eighth, Derek Gallagher, the right center fielder, or in this case, extra infielder, fifth infielder. Dick Labba, the third sacker, hits in the number nine position. And batting tenth is Doug Chapusky, the second baseman. So Kentucky jumping out in front early here, 2-0, just as they did last night in game number one when they defeated Milwaukee by a 15-5 margin, only to see Milwaukee turn the tables in the second game Coming back to win 12 to 2. Here's Greg Wagner. 478 regular season mark, two homers, 26 RBIs. Joe, imagine what kind of money he would be making if he was hitting that in baseball. Oh boy. <laughs> First pitch is inside for a ball. You'll see Schreier go through several gyrations out there. He moves from one side of the mound to the other. Here's Nikitas, the second baseman. First baseman Whitlock, and there's one gone. As you watch Schreier work out on the mound and his counterpart for Milwaukee, Rick uh, Weiderman, but more so Schreier than any other pitcher, I believe, he will move from one side of the pitching slab to the other. He will uh, fake the pitch, which is legal in this game. And as a matter of fact, we were told that at times he has been known to throw the ball from between his legs. 
So he goes through several gyrations out there. The batter is Dennis Grazier. He can hit the long ball as attested by his 22 homers, 87 RBIs on the year. He popped one out of here deep over the right field wall last night. There you see the double pump by Schreier. Little looping ball into left center field. That's going to get in, and it gets by the left fielder, Winders. That's all the way around, Joe. Here's Grazer heading for third. Throw coming in. He's going to try to go all the way. It'll make it standing up. And inside the park home run for Dennis Grazer, his second of the playoffs. And we have ourselves a two-to-one ball game very quickly. Anytime that ball gets by that outfielder, it's four bases, Joe. There's yep. just no way they can retrieve it. The fences are too far away. The only question that time was whether Winders was going to be able to get over and cut it off. Here's a guy that can fly. Phil Higgins, 18 homers, 531 average on the year, 89 RBIs. Again, you see Schreier with that double and sometimes triple pumping motion. Gowdy, the center fielder playing deep, goes back to his right. There are two gone. This is about a 350 foot out. Yep. <laughs> Now, Gowdy normally plays very shallow out in center field. But on both Higgins and Dillard, he stays fairly deep. And you just saw one of the reasons why. Here's Jim Dillard. On the regular season, 439 average, 10 homers, 65 RBIs. Milwaukee has shown the most power in this series so far. They have five homers in the two games that have been played to date. Dillard can't quite get to it in foul territory. Just as he crossed the line, the ball dropped in front of him. They were talking, uh, Joe, uh, earlier that uh, Milwaukee didn't have quite as much power, the long ball. Uh, Kentucky and uh, well they sure proved it the last night and even tonight even with, uh, with that long blast 350 foot out well they've all homered Kentucky so far five to one or five to none excuse me Kentucky does not have a round tripper two gone a run in for Milwaukee here in the bottom half of inning number one they trail it 2 one we'll point out to you in case you were not with us for the other games that a fouled third strike constitutes a strikeout in this league. High fly to left. Dillard has it measured. Waiting. Tall can of corn, and he's there. Milwaukee comes up with one run on the one hit, a homer by Dennis Grazier. No errors. They leave nobody on. And after a full inning, the score, Kentucky 2 and Milwaukee 1. NCAA football on ESPN, Ohio State and Minnesota. Two new coaches, Earl Bruce for the Buckeyes, perennial Big Ten contenders, and Joe Salem for the Golden Gophers. Minnesota, Ohio State football right here on ESPN, your total sports cable network. Also coming up, Arizona State, Florida State, Purdue UCLA, and Tennessee Boston College. Joe, this is Phil Schreier getting in the box now, and it's been said around the league and, and from the experts that uh, he is without a doubt the smartest slow pitch softball pitcher and uh, playing today in the professional ranks if he gets you two strikes you can believe me you can bet on an inside outside it'll be on the corner it's a type of pitch that you have to you have to swing at so you can't hit it as good as you as the ball down the middle excellent control all right it'll be Schreier Fritz and Whitlock to face the right-hander Rick Weiterman here in inning number two Pops that one in there on the rear portion of the plate. One ball, one strike. In the hole to right field, and Schreier is on with a base hit. Well, there's exactly what you're talking about, John. Not only a smart pitcher, but a very smart hitter. Schreier hasn't got a home run all year yet. He's got 55 RBIs on the season, so you know he knows where to put those base hits and when to come up with them. Well, it's just got to be said, he's got uh, excellent, what you call excellent bat control. Jerry Fritz, the batter, there are his stats, two homers. Trying to put it in the same spot, cut off by the second baseman. Shapleski throw to the shortstop covering in time for the force play. Fine play by Shapleski, actually 
backhanded that ball. Beautiful play by Shapleski to get the force on Trier moving over. Here's the replay now. There's, a, there's one great play. Look at this now. They just, just do get him. Look how hard he's going into second base. Yeah. And a good <laughs> job by Schreier. <laughs> These guys are playing for keeps, Joe. He took Wenzel out of the play. Off the bat of Greg Whitlock. Dave Janicek is there. So there are two gone, and holding at first base is Jerry Fritz. Number 10 hitter in the order. Phil Gowdy will be the batter. It's hard to believe, Joe, that uh, that fly ball there, I'm sure he tried to hit it to right center, and he hit the ball too good. Can you imagine telling your ball players, don't hit the ball so good? <laughs> <laughs> Take a little off, huh? Yeah. All right, Gowdy, 291 average, no homers, 17 RBIs under year. Great defensive center fielder. Can really go get him. You could almost say with Rick out there pitching, he'd be the sixth infielder, Joe. Yeah. Little looper into center. Base hit for Gowdy. Pulling up at second base and holding there is Jerry Fritz. So Kentucky trying to add to their two to one lead with two gone here in the second inning. Have runners at first and second. Gowdy at first, Fritz at second. And the batter will be Nick Nikitas, who is one for one in this ball game. Single came around to score in the first. Came into this game with a 500 batting average in the World Series in the first two games, and he upped that with that base hit in the first. Good little sticker. Fine defensive ball player, too. He could play that second base with the best of them. Also, he's got a high percentage, Joe, of, being, of getting on base. A real good percentage of that. He's not a home run hitter, but uh, he's what you call in a game a pest. <laughs> With runners at first and second, the ball eluded catcher Jim Dillard. The runners cannot advance on that play. Had there been a runner at third and the ball gotten away from Dillard, he could have moved in on it. That's going to find the hole. Moving over to cut it off quickly as Higgins. Here comes Fritz around third. He'll score. Throw comes back in. And Gowdy holds it third. And on with an RBI single is Nick Nikitas. And the Kentucky margin goes to 3-1. to one. Joe, now we're in that situation where that, uh, with that runner on third base, this year uh, you can you can uh, score from third base on a pass ball. In other words, if the catcher... Well, what we just saw with the ball getting by, right. if Gowdy had been where he is now, he could have tried to come in and score. Now you notice how the catcher... Shot right back up the middle. That's going to score Gowdy easily. And on the play, Nikita's legging it for third, away from the center fielder. Higgins and uh, Nikita's will come in to score. Ball gets away all the way to the backstop. Reardon motors over to third and holds on there. So a couple of miscues there. Higgins mishandling the ball in center field. And then the throw getting away from everybody on the way in. Give Reardon a base hit. You can't make too many of those mistakes, Joe, and come out on top. They got to shore up that defense. Especially with this explosive Kentucky ball club. They'll take advantage of every mistake you make and, and capitalize on it. Three runs in for Kentucky here in the second. They lead it now 5-1. See whether they charged one error or two on that. They charged at least one. They, two errors. Oh. Okay, one on the throw on the... Uh, play in center fielder on Higgins and then on the throw by Wenzel. So two errors allowing Reardon to go all the way to third and Nikitas to score an unearned run. Drill to oh, right that's... center field and that's going to find the hole. He's going to run a long time on that one. Gaddy around second. Higgins up with the ball. Gaddy to third. Throw coming to the plate and Gaddy will hold at third base with a triple. Tagged it in the gap in right center field. Well, when you got those three outfielders out there, Joe, these are the things that happen. Of course, last night, they couldn't find that gap. Tonight, now, it looks like they might have an idea they're, they're finding the gap, and uh, this is going to be a, if they find the gap, it's going to be a tough ball game. Well, Kentucky hitting with, obviously, going for more power tonight than they did last night. That ball was as hard as we've seen any of the Kentucky ball players hit it. The batter is Cobby Harrison. Sacrifice fly. His last time up. 
Third baseman Dick Lava can't find the handle, and yet another run comes in to score. So Milwaukee having their problems here in the second inning, and that's going to bring Mike Mazzelli, or Mazzelli, the Milwaukee manager out to try to settle his team down. Base hit for Harrison on the play. On that last six hit of the inning for Kentucky. On that last ground ball with Harrison. With Harrison running, Joe, and that was on his glove hand at third base. What do you think? <laughs> well, Harrison over at first. Conference on the mound breaks up. There's your score. Seven to one. So Kentucky trying to get a leg up early here. Right now, John, a game very similar to what we had in game one last night. That's exactly Kentucky right. Kentucky jumped all over Milwaukee for six in the second inning last night. Jumped out in front and held it. Chuck Winders, the batter. Deep to left center field, Higgins. And Janicek, Janicek makes the catch. Oh, boy, that was a good catch. Fine running catch. But Kentucky comes up with five runs on six hits. Two Milwaukee errors. And they leave a runner. Here's that last play again, John. Fine he running catch. came a long ways for that. Of course, they're hollering all the way. I got it, I got it, I got it. So the score after an inning and a half is Kentucky 7 and Milwaukee 1. Sun Devils of Arizona State clash with Florida State, and you'll see all the action as ESPN, your total sports cable network, continues our coverage of NCAA college football. Also coming up on ESPN, Ohio State at Minnesota, Purdue with UCLA, Tennessee versus Boston College. Go Boyle along with John Blanchard, and we're live here from Jake's Field in Lannan, Wisconsin, game number three of the American Slow Pitch Professional Softball League World Series. Milwaukee down 7-1. to one. They send up their leading hitter, Rick Weiterman, the pitcher to the plate. And John, he just tried to drop that ball down the left field side for an extra base hit. Joe, that's exactly right. Here's a 21-year-old who has just, just started actually playing professional softball. He led the league in hitting this year. He had a 557 batting average, and that's just the way he did it. But now he's smart because he can turn around like last night pull that ball, hit that home run. He's got a lot of power, but he's a smart hitter. Yeah, he put one over the right field wall last night, and we'll advise you the length of those fences in just a minute. They are long. That is a fair ball. Wiederman around first, headed for second. They won't get him. He goes in sliding, didn't have to. He could have stood up all the way. A double for Rick Wiederman, and Milwaukee has their leadoff man on. It is... Here he goes after that first time. He hit the ball left field. Now he decides to pull it. Look at that shot. It was about a, just about six inches fair. <laughs> but that's a sign of a good hitter. Threaded the needle on that one. Paul Wenzel, the batter. Wenzel, a 455 average, five homers, 44 RBIs on the regular season. Phil Schreier, the right hander in the mound, it is 295 down the left field line. 325 down, or excuse me, 295 down the right field line. That is on into left field for a base hit. Wiederman will, or Wiederman rather, will hold up at third base. 325 down the left field line and 385 to straightaway center field. So it requires a pretty good poke to get the ball out of here. And they are using a McGregor red stitch ball in these games, and that is not one of the longer balls to hit, is it, John? Well, you can imagine how hard that ball was hit. you got five infills out here, and it still went through them. So these balls are really tagged. Dave Janicek, the batter. Pitch is a little deep on him. Drills that one to left. Winders can't hold on to it. Here comes Weiderman in to score. And that'll move Wenzel over to second base. And that's an error on the left fielder, Chuck Winders. Looked like he just took his eye off it, John. Well, it could have been a knuckleball, Joe. A lot of times uh, uh, he came in. He came, now, that ball could be moving on him. I'm sure it was because there's no way he could miss that ball if it was spinning. But the knuckleball came down. He just he just he slowed up on his drop. He spun down on him and just dropped. Here's Chuck Gallagher. Right center fielder, actually the fifth infielder in this case for Milwaukee. 417 average on the year. 
Winders into foul territory, and he makes the catch. Runners tag, and they will move up. <laughs> Just barely sliding in ahead of the throw was Wenzel. <laughs> so Wenzel moves over to third. Janicek is at second. One run in for Milwaukee here in a second. And the batter will be Dick Laba. Both these ball clubs, Joe, are really hustling. The drilling is flowing. They're going head first. They're barreling the guys out at second base. There's an appeal play coming up. They say no. Protest there is that Wenzel may have left third base or second base too early after the catch to try to go to third. Well, you never get it if you don't try it in that case, John. This is Lava, 438 mark on the year, one homer, 31 RBIs. That's short. And Gaddy had a move over in front of that. Now, the runner at third in this instance, Wenzel could score should a ball elude catcher Bill Gaddy. If that ball hits, a, hits the ground, you'll notice how the catcher's now, boy. Both hands are out there, and he's right in front of us. Schreier having a little control trouble. Lava taking all the way. Three balls and a strike. Get out in front of that one. Pulled it foul, so a full count now. And I will point out to you again that should Lava on this pitch foul it off, it constitutes a third strike. So if you're the pitcher, Phil Schreier, I would assume you're going to try to keep the ball inside on him, John, and make him pull it, and hopefully he'll pull it foul. At the same token, now, he's got a three. He should, you know, he's got to throw a strike, too. Right, though. he's got to get it over the plate. Right. To right field. Gowdy backpedaling. Oh. Runner tagging at third, makes the catch. Couldn't get anything on the throw, and the runners will move up on that one. Coming in to score for Milwaukee is Wenzel, and moving over to third is Janicek. So a sacrifice fly by Dick Lava. Gowdy almost overran the ball coming in, and he couldn't really get anything on the throw. Looks like he lost the ball out there, Joe, and then tripped, kind of stumbled on it. The batter now, Doug Szapleski. 442 mark on the regular season. One homer, 23 RBIs. Two gone now for Milwaukee. They've scored a couple. Would like to bring that man Janicek in from third if they could. The pitch is short. 7-3, Kentucky lead. In the hole. Hey, and sir. that'll play Wenzel. Make the score 7-4. Still an RBI single for Shapleski. He's on at first base, and Milwaukee's still alive here in the second. This one just found the hole behind Nikita's outstretched glove, John. Opposite field, right smack dab in the hole. Greg Wagner, the batter now for Milwaukee. Greg with a 330 mark in series play so far. Foul territory. Fritz is there, and that does it for Milwaukee here in the second. But they come up with three runs of their own on three hits. There was one Kentucky error and one man left on. So after two complete, it's Kentucky seven. A different ball club, different ball teams, both of both Kentucky. Looks like they're more relaxed now. Well, you the played in, sure. You played in the baseball World Series, and I'm sure these guys, although it, you know it's on a smaller scale than that. But there've got to be butterflies there too. Last night. Oh, you bet, Joe. Anytime, anytime you get a World Series or contest like this, it's an important thing. And these guys are. There's a few butterflies floating around in there. The batter's Dave Whitlock, the first baseman. He'll be followed by Phil Schreier and Jerry Fritz for Kentucky here in the top half of inning number three. I'm just going on a limb, Joe. I think that this Dave is going to try to hit that ball left field. <laughs> Great play by Grazier, the first baseman. Dennis Grazier with a fine backhand pickup as Dave Whitlock makes a liar out of John Blanchard. There he is. He's pulling. <laughs> he pulled that shot. Boy, did he ever. He really crawled all over that one. Almost had himself a double down the line. You know, Joe, I've been so wrong so many times. I, I don't think I'm going to. I can't say anything else. Now, this guy, I thought would hit the ball to left field. Here's Schreier. He punched himself. A uh, base hit the last time up. That will go foul. Oh. 
Hey, he showed a little power there. Wagner over after the ball, but he couldn't catch up with it. Game four will follow this. They play four games here in Milwaukee, and then next weekend, starting next Friday, the series will move to Louisville, Kentucky, as they conclude the best five out of nine World Series of the American Professional Slow Pitch Softball League. Pitch goes inside. One ball, one strike. So he played, Phil played long ball at first pitch. Well, he played long ball again. Janicek. And there's one gone. Two gone, excuse me. Well, we saw a lot of this last night, John, in the part of Kentucky. In the second game, when Milwaukee went to the five-man infield, they continually were popping fly balls into the outfield. Well, that's right. And the last time up, uh, for instance, uh, Schreier hit a base hit to right field, just punched the ball. Now they're playing long ball again. Jerry Fritz, Phil Higgins on the run, and he makes the catch. Fine running catch by Higgins as he came way over from right center field. And Kentucky up and down in order. Here it is again, John. He covered a lot of ground. Oh, he really took, look at that. Now that's how close they were. Wow. Looked like they might have run. At any rate, after two and a half, it is Kentucky seven and Milwaukee four. Last half of the third inning, Dennis Grazier, Phil Higgins, and Jim Dillard, the number two, three, and four hitters in the Milwaukee order. We'll see what they you can notice, do about that three-run Kentucky lead. You notice now that Kentucky has, has gone to a four-man uh -huh. outfield? A change here, so we have had a defensive change. We'll pick that up for you as soon as we have a chance. Kentucky has moved four men into the outfield, and they're now going with a four-man infield. Grazier is surveying the situation. Now, whether this is for just one man, Grazier has been continually hitting the ball deep. Now, according to the Hoyle, uh, Joe, Milwaukee should pick this up, this change up, this move, and shoot for the gap right up the middle. Here you get a look at the setup around the infield and outfield. And Grazier trying to hit it back up the middle, but Schreier cut that off. That's right. This is a real strategy ball game, Joe. Yeah, it is. As soon as they make a move and they see the gap, the hole up there, they'll shoot for it. Well, you know, this five-man infield, Gene, I've seen, or uh, John, I've seen Gene Mock of the Minnesota Twins use as a defensive strategy late in a ball game uh, in Major League Baseball. And I've seen other managers do it on that caliber of play, but it's uh, not necessarily a, a brand new thing as far as professional slot softball goes. Well, they evidently saw something. Good backhand stop well by Whitlock. Didn't get him. Bill Higgins beat it out. Good backhand stop by Whitlock, but he really couldn't get too much going around the ball. He was going the wrong direction. Let's have a, uh, another look at this. I don't think it was. I really don't think it was that close now, Joe. Yeah, but Really, Whitlock, the direction he's moving away from the bag, couldn't get everything he wanted to on the throw. And, and he'd have to be throwing that from a baseball uh, shortstop. Oh, sure. Other throws. That's a, it's an outfield throw. <laughs> Infield hit for Higgins. So with one down, Milwaukee with a runner at first, and Jim Dillard is the batter. Fly ball out to left his first time up. Got out in front of that one. Really creamed it, but pulled it foul by about 40 feet. I watched Dillard in the batting practice, Joe, and he seemed to be pulling a lot of balls. They were pitching him inside uh, on purpose just to see if he could probably get that ball down the left field line. He's got good power. We saw him demonstrate that last night. There you saw more of the gyrations of Phil Schreier out in the mound. Faked an overhand pitch that time. Dillard cranks it up. Gowdy ball. moving in, and there are two gone. Higgins faked going from first to second, but held on. Gowdy had him played almost perfectly. Kentucky has now gone back to their three-man outfield in the five-man infield, so evidently a move was for Grazier only. Boy, there's a lot of strategy going on now. And now they're wheeling around, moving everybody around. <laughs> See what they're going to do. They're changing gloves. Okay, Whitlock, the first baseman, has gone back into the outfield. And Harrison has moved over to play first base now. Reardon is still at third. 
Well, Whitlock should be. Uh, Greg Whitlock is still at short. So it changes the move of Dave Whitlock off first into the outfield. And Whit Harrison has moved over to first base. Whitlock was originally an outfielder, Joe, so uh, I don't think that's, you know, he's, he's at home out there. So they have gone back to the four-man outfield for Waiterman, and it doesn't phase him in the least. He pumps it right through the middle. Took advantage of that fifth infielder not being there, John, and just drove it right back up the middle. You see why he was the leading hitter in the league. 21 years old, he's a real smart hitter, Joe. Well, Higgins... Over at second base, Wiederman, or Wiederman at first, and Paul Wenzel, the batter. Paul singled, came around to score in the second inning. Milwaukee up by three, two down, two on here in the bottom of the third. Now they inning. went back to five. <laughs> so we got strategy going all night in this one. <laughs> Kentucky changing from one defensive alignment to the other. That is foul. Well, the manager, Steve Kaufman, told me prior to the game, he said, John, you're going to see a different uh, a different ball game tonight. Well, John, I got and news I... for you. He didn't lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, Joe, if that doesn't have... Uh, uh, Tries to psych out the other ball club. Oh, sure. Strategy on that. Well, sure, yeah. They're changing the defensive setup every time a batter comes to the plate. You really got to back out, take a look at what they got. and Kind of like a, a quarterback in football. Into right center field. Higgins around third. He'll score. Letterman legging it around third. They're going to send him in. So will not be in time. Two runs in for Milwaukee. And on with a stand-up double is Paul Wenzel. And we have a 7-6 ball game on our hands. He tried to go up there. There's a slight gap. Even with, he tried to go right up the middle with it. And he did. There's a slight gap out there between the five infielders. Now that's good, smart softball. That's, there's a lot of strategy in this game, Joe. The batter, Dave Janicek. Tying run at second with two gone. Right field, it will drop. Janicek around third, ball all the way to the wall. That's four bases. Around third, coming to the plate, the throw, not in time. Dave Janicek. A two-run homer. And Milwaukee jumps out in front. Eight to seven. Excuse me, they will not give him a home run, John. Let's take a look. It's just a line drive. Fly ball line drive. It's just out of his reach. Watch you miss it out there. It's four bases. And he might have missed the plate, Joe. Let's have a look. Oh, he just got the corner of it. <laughs> well, he originally flashed an error, but they have changed it to a home run for Dave Janicek. And it is now 8-7 in favor of Milwaukee, and Steve Kaufman is making a trip to the mound. Two-run homer for Janicek scores Wenzel ahead of him. Well, now they've changed it again to a hit in the air. We get well now. They're going to have a conference out there now, Joe. He's bringing he's bringing everybody out to the mound, which might be a good idea. Well, just he just wants to settle them down. Right. It's like calling a timeout in a basketball game when uh, uh, the ball when a, when a certain club is really hot on baskets. Now, John, I want to ask you a question. In baseball, they couldn't do that. No, no. Four. You can't, yeah, you can't have that many out to the mound at the same time, Joe. I believe it's four, four men, or three members at uh, one time. One in the infielder, uh, the pitcher, catcher, and manager. manager that could right. be four. Right. Derek Gallagher is the hitter. Nobody on now as Janicek's homer cleared the bases, and we'll check that scoring on that. We've had two rulings on it now. One a home run, another that it was a, a hit and an error. The fielder fell down. Out in right oh, field. You can't give him an error. Man. Right on the chalk line. Oh, they say foul. Oh, they said foul. Oh, oh boy. Wow. <laughs> there, goes gonna Mike. Break. there goes Mike Bazzilli, Joe. We'll get a chance to see that again, John. See what Watch you, I that thought chalk I, now. I thought I take... saw chalk. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, such are the trials and tribulations of umpires made. If any part of that ball hits the chalk, on the other, either side, it's a fair ball. That was pretty close. I wouldn't want to gamble on that one, Joe. You want to guess who's going to win the argument? <laughs> they never <laughs> lost. <laughs> It'll go as a foul ball. Two balls and a strike. 
on the batter, Derek Gallagher. Schreier visibly upset out on the mound. As Milwaukee has climbed on him for five big ones here in the third and taken the lead. Well, now they say the count's 2-2. Two -two. Wait, umpire. Schreier's evidently satisfied now. They've changed the scoreboard. Two balls, two strikes, they say, not two and one. Right back to Schreier, and he snags it. But Milwaukee comes up with five big runs on four hits. There was evidently one Milwaukee error, and he left on. So the score after three is Milwaukee eight and Kentucky seven. NCAA action, such as Ohio State, Minnesota, Arizona State, Florida State, Purdue, UCLA. Get the total NCAA college football picture on your total sports cable network, ESPN. Well, it's official now, Joe, that home run that uh, Janicek hit out to right center is officially a home run. So, no your, so your totals in the third for Milwaukee read five runs, four hits, no errors. We will go now to the top half of inning number four, Greg Whitlock. The number nine hitter in the order, followed by Phil Gowdy, and then the leadoff man, Nick Nikita, scheduled for Kentucky as they find themselves on the short end of the score for the first time tonight. Important games for Milwaukee, John, in that the, the last five games of this series will be played in Kentucky. And you were talking about the crowds down there early, earlier. Well, I was talking to the they ball. They really support this oh, ball. Oh, they really go all out, Joe. That will drop for a base hit. Wagner over to cut it off. And on with a base hit is Greg Whitlock. Ninth hit of the game for Kentucky. That ball is finding those spots. The eyes, what do they call them? The eyes. The ball's got eyes are dropping in there tonight, Joe. Yeah, you know, John, coming into this game tonight, both these teams in the first two games had scored 17 runs. And yet in the three prior meetings between them, neither team had scored more than four. <laughs> Isn't that something? Evidently, they discovered something in those first three games. Well, this is a big series, and their concentration is there. Their bat control is there, and these guys are really up, and they're hustling. Phil Gowdy, the batter. Left field in front of Janicek, and Kentucky has runners at first and second. Nobody out. So here they come battling right back. You know, Joe, in the previous inning, Kentucky had three fly balls or that one line drive to first base, but the other two fly balls were the guys who were trying to play long ball. Now they come back this inning here. Now you've got two base hits, two singles, see? Now, I, it's just amazing how these guys can adapt to situations. Nikitas down the right field side. That will go foul. They got a tough hitter here, John. He is two for two in this ball game, has scored a couple of runs, and he was hitting 500 in the series coming in, so he's no easy out. He's got excellent bat control. He's, uh, he's the guy that's a, uh, what you call a little pest. He's on the base all the time, and uh, every time you look up there, he's standing on first, second, or third. And this, is a, this is a tough out. He's going to give the ball a good play someplace. Jake's Field in Lannan, Wisconsin, the site of the American Professional Slow Pitch Softball League World Series. All right, all right. Left field, Janicek digging hard, makes the catch. The runner tags at second, Whitlock. He goes to third, and Gowdy moves over to second base. So the Joe, fly he, ball advances both runners. Joe, he took a good rip at that. He yes, played he a long ball. <laughs> well, he's got the tying and go-ahead run now in scoring position. Whitlock at third represents the tying run, and Gowdy at second. The go-ahead run for Kentucky with one man gone. Now, here's just a, here's a good situation right here. A base hit will score both runs, so he doesn't have to go for the home run. Just to get a base hit and both runs will score. This is Don Reardon. Two for two in the game. A single and a double and he scored twice. And remember the runner at third can advance on a pass ball by the catcher. Hard shot took a oh. bad hop and goes on into right field. That's going to score both runners from second and third. Reardon legging it for second. Went into a slide. And Wagner overran the ball. Otherwise he might have had third. Had he not gone into the slide. So it'll be a double for Reardon. 
And Kentucky goes back out in front. That's all he tried to do on this one. Take a look at this replay now, Joe. There, he just tried to punch the ball right up there. Ball took a bad, bad hop. Went in there, fell in there for a double. But that's that's how the game is played. His base hit scores two runs. So it's 9-8 now. Kentucky with the lead back here in the top half of the four. Still just one man out. And the batter's Bill Gaddy. Led the Kentucky club in home runs during the regular season with 20. This guy was also a, a two-time All-Pro. He is really built, John. Oh, he's put together. 533 batting average during the season. He built like a Saturday evening post, as they say. 2-1 pitch. Just missed, and Jim Dillard and oh, Rick yeah. Weiderman, neither one happy with the call on that pitch. Weiderman right down to the plate to talk things over with Gary Ingram, the umpire. Well, I can imagine what he's telling them, Joe. <laughs> yeah, you, the umpires ever answer over your shoulder when that's going on, John? No, it's just that you, uh, let's say you have to, you have to watch your vocabulary. <laughs> you can go through all the gyrations you want. Three just, balls, excuse me, Doug, go just, just be careful of the vocabulary. <laughs> Three balls and a strike on Bill Gaddy. He tripled his last time up to drive in a couple of runs. Runner at second base, Don Reardon. Oh, Dillard, Jim is, Jim is telling check his to bat. check his bat. You know, a lot of times, Joe, a catcher will do that just to try to upset the hitter, break his concentration. He knew that there was probably nothing wrong with that bat, but just to break the concentration. 3-1 pitch. He is low, a little short with it, and he walks him. Weiderman comes over and has something to say to Gaddy. But Gaddy's on at first. Reardon at second, one man gone. And that brings the cleanup hitter, Cobby Harris, into the plate. One for one in the game, a sacrifice fly in the first to drive in a run, and he singled to plate Gaddy in the second. So he has two RBIs tonight. Higgins in center field. The runner, Reardon, tags at second. He'll go to third. Throw almost got all the way through. Holding it first is Gaddy. Two gone now as Harrison skies to center. And that'll bring Chuck Winders, the left fielder, to the plate. He's 0 for 2, got on an error in the first inning. Two in for Kentucky here in the fourth. They have regained the lead by one run. Popped him up. The shortstop, Wenzel. And the short fielder, Gallagher, cut right in front of him to take the ball. But Kentucky comes up with a couple of runs on three hits. There were no errors, and they leave two men stranded. After three and a half, it is Kentucky nine and Milwaukee eight. I'll remind you, this is game three of the American Professional Slow Pitch Softball League World Series. Game four will follow this evening. Then the scene of the action will change next weekend, starting Friday evening for games five six and however many are necessary at that point from louisville kentucky and we will be on hand here on espn your total sports cable network and we hope that you will be along with us john an exciting ball game so far we go to the last half of the fourth inning kentucky up nine eight dick laba and doug shapleski the number nine and ten hitters in the milwaukee order will precede the leadoff man greg wagner to the plate first sure. three scheduled batters for milwaukee Oh. Whitlock, the first baseman, scooped that one right up off his shoe tops. You know, Joe, I just can't believe it. These guys hit this softball just like you would a baseball. That ball was a line shot. It's just amazing how talented these guys are. You can, well, they're pros. <laughs> they're the best there is. They have good wrist play this game, John. Popped him up to center field. Gowdy is there. So Shapleski skies to center. And there are very quickly two gone. Right now, John Milwaukee doing what Kentucky did back in the third. That's right. 
I think the ball club that just keep punching the ball the opposite field. You can't hit a ball the opposite field as hard as you can, Joe, if you're going to pull the ball. And I think that the, the well, what I would do the rest of the game is I would have every guy just try to punch the ball the opposite field. There you see Schreier go way out to his right. Just barely kept that foot on the pitching rubber and went way out to his right. Brought it in from near third base. Two balls, no strikes. There is exactly Wagner trying to punch it to right. Winders couldn't quite catch up with it. Joe, he's he's so he's uh, another another couple of inches, and he's going to be out of the batter's box. I think he's got his heels. See what he does here, where he positions himself in the box. As deep as he stands in the box, John, if I was Bill Caddy, I'd be ready to ready to take off. Well, he's moved up now. Oh no, yeah, okay. He gives plenty of room to Schreier. Oh boy, he's just staying away from the plate. And I and you notice how Phil Schreier was trying to pitch him outside? Yeah. His bat. Whatever anyway, what happens is Joe. That's something you won't see too often. No, you don't see many walks. Wagner draws the walk. He's on at first, and that brings Dennis Grazer to the plate. And this guy can park it, John. See whether they go to the four-man outfield here. I think they're going to. Whitlock changing gloves again, and he'll go to the outfield. And the fifth infielder, Cobby Harrison, will move over and play first base. So with Grazer coming to the plate, he is a long ball threat. And they go to the four outfield, four infield setup. All right, everybody set. Well, now there's that big gap right up the middle between shortstop and second base. There's that, uh, that's that base, I call it the base hit valley. Uh, we saw Grazier park two last night, one fair, one foul. There's a good look at it. You see the alley John talks about right smack up the middle. If Schreier doesn't cut it off, it's through. But they're assuming, they're hoping that this guy just plays long ball. That's a strike, two balls and a strike. Two two count even. Schreier yeah, caught the outside corner on him. He didn't like that one. And again, another rule we should point out. Grazier called timeout just at the last moment. If he had not had stayed there in the box and argued about it, Schreier could have delivered on him and had the pitch been over, he would have been called out. That's deep. Oh. And this time Gaddy and Schreier thought they had it. Oh. So we get a full count. You know, Joe, he's got two strikes on him. <laughs> he cannot afford to hit the ball foul. He is eyeballing up there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I bet he doesn't eyeball this one. No. 3-2 pitch. Cranked up on it. Up drives it into center field. Gets away from the center fielder. Here comes the runner. Wagner around third with the tying run. The throw to the plate. Not in time. And we're all tied up at nine apiece. It'll go as a base hit of an error. Here's a line shot now, and you got to remember it's cold and damp out there. That ball is skipping off that grass. Joe, it's, it's very difficult to handle a line drive, one hop in the outfield. It's cold here this evening in Lannan, Wisconsin, and there's enough dampness and dew on that uh, field. When that ball hits that grass, boy, she comes out there like a tee shot. Well, Dennis Grazier at second now with the go-ahead run, and the batter is Phil Higgins. Picked up by Reardon at third. Long throw. Got him. Fine play by Reardon and a good arm, but Milwaukee comes up with a equalizer. One run on one hit. One Kentucky error and one man left. After four, it is Kentucky nine, Milwaukee nine. The Volunteers of Tennessee are a definite title threat in the Southeast Conference this year. They'll clash with Eastern Power Boston College right here on ESPN's continuing coverage of NCAA college football. You'll be seeing all the top NCAA actions, such as Ohio State at Minnesota, Arizona State, Florida State, Purdue, UCLA. Get the total NCAA college football picture on your total sports cable network, ESPN. Nine to nine, we are all tied up in a real contrast to the two games we had last night. These two teams have played 
seesaw with the scoreboard all night. Joe, you never think for one moment that these two ball clubs earlier in the year had played a two to a two to nothing and a four to two ball game. They had the uh, four I two, two nothing, four two. And <laughs> you, put, I, you know, I, it's hard to believe, isn't it? <laughs> We've got more than that in this game. <laughs> For Kentucky here in the fifth, Dave Whitlock, Phil Schreier, and Jerry Fritz, the scheduled batters. Well, I'm going to go out on a limb again with this guy, Joe. I think he's going to go to left center. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but it's cut off by Paul Wenzel. Dug out of the dirt by Frazier at first. Great Fine play. play. Real good play. Well, you had the right area, just not deep enough, John. He went that direction. That's a professional play, as they say, Joe. Very nicely done. So there's one gone, and that'll bring Phil Schreier to the plate. He's one for two in the game, got a base hit in the second inning. Milwaukee maintaining a status quo with their defensive alignment. They have stayed with the five-man infield, three-man outfield, but Kentucky has gone from one to the I other. I was talking to Phil Schreier before the game, and I asked him what his success is, Joe, and he just said control. Right through the legs of Paul Wenzel, and Schreier's on. That one laid down on him. An error on the shortstop. Let's have another look at that now. The ball again stayed down on him. He came up, and the ball stayed down, Joe. You can't afford to make those kind of errors in the 99 ball game now. John, you've been out on this infield, and it is a little rough out there. Joe, I'm not going to say a word. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Fritz, the batter with the go-ahead run for Kentucky in the person of Phil Schreier at first base. Fritz 0 for 2, hit into a force play in the second. A fly ball to fairly deep center in the third. Got out in front of that one and just pulled it foul down the first base side. He took a run up in the box on that pitch there, Joe. <laughs> That's what you call it, button your top button and get yeah. it all. <laughs> Pop the button loose so you can spread it out. That's right. <laughs> you come right out of his shirt. One ball, one strike to count on Jerry Fritz, left-handed swinging right fielder. Now let's see if Jerry changes. He had his chance at the long ball, you know, the long fly ball. He went for the down. Let's see now if he's going to go for the base hit. The punch to the opposite field, just give the ball a play. Or is he going to play long ball? Phil Weiderman out of the mound, taking plenty of time. We are in the top half of the fifth inning here at Jake's Field in Lamont, Wisconsin. Outside for the ball, two and one, the count on Fritz. Oh, a great snag by Grazier to right of us. Double play. What a fantastic play by Grazier. We will look at that again as his heads up ball. Teammates congratulate him at the dugout. What a play by Dennis Grazier. That's a heads up ball. Now watch how fast that pitcher gets over there to cover the bag. He dives for it, catches in the web. Now looks for the pitcher. Look at the Weatherman location coming of the across. throw. Just beautiful. I don't know how he threw the ball. Heads up play. No run. No hit. If soccer's your game, ESPN's your spot. St. Louis U tangles with Connecticut in one of ESPN's NCAA soccer features. The two teams had a combined 35-10-1 mark a year ago and are expected to vie for national honors again this season. NCAA College Soccer, St. Louis at Connecticut, right here on your Total Sports Cable Network, ESPN. Let's have a look at that replay. This is the best defensive play we've had in the series so far, Joe. Dove off the ground, in the air. Now he just flips to the pitcher. Rick Wiedemann covering. Great play by Dennis Grazier, not only on the catch, but his location on the throw to Wiedemann as he crossed the plate. He didn't hardly have to reach for the ball. Excellent. Now Jim Dillard will lead it off. The cleanup hitter for Milwaukee, and he pumps it into left field for a leadoff single. Although he's a threat to go to second on anything he gets. <laughs> He, I don't think he thinks single on anything. <laughs> Dillard is on at first to lead it off for Milwaukee. He represents the go-ahead run. 
And now Rick Wiederman. John, I think you pointed it out on the play that this man at the plate right now also made a heads-up play on that defensive play. He did not give up on it and just stand and watch it go. He went over to cover the bag at first and was there for the throw. He knows how to play the position, Joe. He's, he's heads up all the time. Uh -oh. Long drive to right. Fritz slips and falls. It drops behind him. Dillard on his way to third. Weiderman right behind him. Dillard probably could have scored, but he had to wait to see if Fritz could make the catch, and Fritz lost his footing out there. We saw him do that last night a couple of times. Joe, let's have another look at this now. It, there's the shot now. Now he's, he's back. Now he's got to make a quick move. It's too late. He stumbled and fell. Look for a moment like that one might get out of here. Runners at second and third now. Weiderman at second, Dillard at third, and Paul Wenzel the batter. Two for two in the game. Single and a double. He's driven in a couple of runs. Popped him up. Gowdy and Fritz both there. Gowdy. Runner Dillard. Bluffs coming down the line, and a one-hopper goes over to catch his head. Dillard will score. Schreier backing up on the play, and Weiderman moves over to third. Ball hopped right over the head of Bill Gaddy. Joe, I think we better point out right now that uh, the grass in the outfield is, is, is damp. And these guys, the footing out there is a little rough. Anytime, so I, I, I just, you just can't say that the guy don't know how to, you know, he's, he's playing and having a rough night. It's, it's rough out there, it's damp. That ball right there skidded off the uh, infield grass and came up like a shot. They give an error on the throw to Gowdy. So it's a fly ball to uh, center field. No sacrifice fly. And an error on the throw on the center fielder to allow the run to score. Wiederman is over at third base. They will appeal now on Dillard. Say he's safe. But he did not leave early. Joe, that never hurts. It's just uh, you use it all the time on the tag up play. It's yeah. a good idea to do Sometimes that. Sometimes you get it. Sometimes you get it, right. This is Dave Janicek. Got himself an inside the park homer last time. Lifts this one to left center field. Gowdy there again. Weiderman tags up. Good throw by Gowdy, but it won't be in time. And uh, Milwaukee comes up with their second run of the inning on the sacrifice five by Dave Janicek. As he gets another RBI. And Milwaukee with their biggest lead of the game, 11 to 9. Did you notice how he hit the ball to the opposite field to score that runner? Sacks are clean now, and the batter's Derek Gallagher. He's 0 for 2 tonight. 11-9, Milwaukee has gone out in front here in the last half of the fifth. Ball two. That's in there, 2 and 1. If Gallagher gets on, Dick Labo would be the hitter. Whitlock moving over, and that will take care of Milwaukee here in the fifth inning, but not before they come up with two runs on two hits. There was one Kentucky error, and nobody left. The score after five is Milwaukee 11 and Kentucky 9. That's great. He just had one great year. Knight got a base hit and scored back in the fourth inning. Short fielder is there, knocks it down. Gallagher won't have a play. Well, so Whitlock is on, and an error charged to the right center fielder, fifth infielder. So if you score it, give the error to the number nine. You gotta tighten up now, that infield. This is a tying run at the plate, Joe. Well, Phil Gowdy, he's got himself a couple of, a, of hits tonight. Gowdy, just a 291 hitter on the year, hitting over 400 in the series, and he's added to that with a couple of hits here tonight. Takes the first pitch down low for a ball. Probably one of the best center fielders in the game today. That's one of the reasons, that's one of the big reasons why they can go to a five-man infield. Gonna punch it to right, and he punched it into the stands, out of play. Count evens at a ball and a strike. Nobody out. A runner at first, and as John points out, Gowdy represents the tying run as he stands in for Kentucky. I'd like to ask him sometime. I'll have to ask him how much. Uh, he's a high school baseball coach at home. 
what softball, what the difference is. <laughs> Shortstop Wenzel trying to find the handle, gets the lead man, but there's no relay to first base. Joe, if you'll notice now how he got down in front of that ball, there was just absolutely no way that that ball could get underneath him. Play goes Wenzel to Shapleski covering for the force on Whitlock moving over. So Gowdy is on at first with one down. And the batter now, Nick Makitas. Two for three in the game tonight. Came into the series game hitting 500 in the series. Joe, so this uh, Nikitas is built like a, you know, I think he's built like a little fire plug. He's a football coach in the, in the offseason. A high school football coach. And he handles the softball bat very well. Oh, he's strong. Hagen's drifting to his left. Squeezes that one, and there are two gone. Now, his intentions, I'm sure, was just to hit that ball over the infield. He, did, he just hit it a little bit too good. Don Reardon, who's had himself a great night at the plate, doubled and scored in the first, singled and scored in the second, and doubled, was left stranded at third in the fourth inning. So he is three for three tonight. Right center. Oh, right field. Right down the right field line. That's going to go for extra bases. Gowdy can fly. He's around third, coming in to score. Reardon headed for third base. Throw comes in. He will hold up there. So the Milwaukee margin is cut in half. It is now a one-run lead for Milwaukee on the triple by Don Reardon. Well, he needs a four-bagger to complete the cycle tonight, John. A single, two doubles, and a triple. Joe, I really admire those guys that can hit to the opposite field like that with authority. I mean, he just flat knew where he was going with that ball. Well, you called it, and he and, put it out there. And the way she went, I like to see that. That's 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 really difficult to do in, in, in uh, baseball, but in softball, I mean, guys, they could they could probably do that all night long. I think. Rick Weiderman on the hill. Here's a guy that can tie it up with one swing. He could give Kentucky the lead with one swing. Bill Gaddy. He just stands aside while Dillard and Weiderman are astounded by the call. Gary Ingram has not been the most popular man in the Milwaukee dugout tonight. <laughs> the 1-0 pitch. Look at the arms on this guy. There's Bill Getty. Look at the arms. <laughs> He's popped 24 he baggers looks like this a year. Half, he looks like a half a dozen spark, fire plugs. <laughs> That's too deep. Three balls and a strike on Getty. Tying run is at third base. That'll bring him in. Wagner up with the ball, and Gaddy on with an RBI single, and we are all wrapped up again at 11-11. As Reardon scores easily from third. We have some kind of a problem down here. Cobby Harrison is the batter, the cleanup hitter for Kentucky. Go ahead, run at first in the person of Bill Gaddy. And Dennis Grazier, the first baseman, goes out to try to calm Weiderman down. He's still upset about the call prior to that. He and Gaddy have got a thing going anyway. The last time Gaddy was up, he walked, and Weiderman had a word with him. When he went down, they lined to first, and they're jawing at each other right now. Gaddy and Weiderman. Having to go at each other verbally. <laughs> Hope it doesn't go any further than that. <laughs> Deep to left, Janicek. There to make the catch. But Kentucky comes up with two runs on two hits. There was one error and one man left. After five and a half, it is Milwaukee 11, Kentucky 11. I'm Joe Boyle along with former New York Yankee star John Blanchard here at Jake's Field in Lannan, Wisconsin for the American Slow Pitch Professional Softball League World Series. All tied up at a game apiece. We are in game number three and the score is deadlocked. As we move to the last half of inning number six, we are wrapped up at 11-11. Dick Laba, Doug Shapleski, the number nine and ten hitters, and Greg Wagner, the leadoff man, the first three men to travel to the plate for Milwaukee here in the bottom of the sixth. 
as they try to regain the lead. John, these two teams met earlier in the year just three times. They played twice last night. They're playing twice tonight. They'll play again next weekend. When you play that many times back to back like that, tempers do tend to get a little bit short at times, don't they? That's right, Joe. And especially now when you're playing for the top honor. This is for all the marbles. These guys are competitors. They're great athletes. And it all makes for better. It's all competition. It all makes for a real good series. And they're evenly matched. They've got uh, just tremendous personnel on both ball clubs. It's going to be a barn burn before she's over. Dick Lava gets his first hit of the night to lead it off for Milwaukee here in the sixth. He represents the go-ahead run. And Dick Chapleski will try to move him over. Right center field for a base hit. Gowdy right there whips it back in. Lava stops at second, and Milwaukee, with back-to-back -back base hits, have runners at first and second. Lead run now in scoring position, and the personal Lava out at second. And Greg Wagner will be the batter. There's, there's the manager, Mike Bazzilli, out talking to his hitter. I'm just assuming he's just telling him, now all I need from you is a base hit. Don't go for the home run, just get the base hit. Got to be a thrill for Mike. This is his first year as manager of Milwaukee, and here he is in the World Series. Wagner has been on once tonight. He walked. By Nikitas in the right field. Comes the runner. Lamber around third. Throw to the plate. He is safe. Now the runner trying to go to third. He is out at third base. Originally, I believe... As Shapleski tried to go to third, I believe Reardon missed the tag, and then as Shapleski tried to scramble back into the bag, Reardon got him, because the third base umpire, Pete Nary, did not give the out call right away. Here it is again. Let's have a look at that uh, run score, at home plate here. Here comes the throw, and look at him go. He's really barreling. Real close, just beautiful hook slide. Couldn't, couldn't Bill Gaddy couldn't get to him. Wagner at first, with one gone now, and Milwaukee up on top, 12-11. The batter is Dennis Grazier. And Denny's playing long ball, Joe. Well, territory. Catch is made, and the runner moves up. Catch made by Bear out in right field. So Grazier out on the foul to right. And a batter, Phil Higgins, and he's a tough out. Wagner at second with two gone now. One run in for Milwaukee in the bottom of the sixth. They have resumed the lead. First pitch to Higgins inside a ball. There's a big run sitting at second base out there, Joe. Oh. Ripped into left field. Wagner going to try to leg it in the home. Here comes the throw. Not in time. Higgins just gets back into the bag at first. RBI single for Phil Higgins as he plates Greg Wagner to make it 13 to 11. Let's have a look at this again, Joe. Line drive, single, base hit to left field. Throws made to the plate. Can't get him to the plate. Now Higgins right there should have maybe slid, hit the dirt. He almost didn't get back in there. He almost, no, if he, if he slid, he'd been all right, but he tried, to, he tried to get back in and stand it up. Here's Dillard. Singled and scored his last time up. Fair ball. Good play out in left field by Winders, and he'll hold him to a double. Excellent defensive play by Winders as he hustled over there. And really, he held Dillard to a double. Could have gone for a lot more. Well, it had been inside the park if that ball skipped by him. He made a great play. So Milwaukee with a two-run lead and trying to add to it. Higgins at third, Dillard at second. Two outs and the batter, the league's leading hitter, Rick Waiterman. And he gets an intentional pass. Well, you knew that was coming. Yeah. <laughs> they do not have to give him the four balls if they signify that they intend to intentionally pass it. So the bases are loaded now for Paul Wenzel. 
who is two for three in the game tonight. 333 hitter in the series coming into this game. In the center field, one run is in. Gets away from Dowdy. Here comes another run. Wait a minute, on third, he's going to score. Throw comes in. A bases loaded single, and it clears the bases as they kick it around in the outfield. Three more runs score as Wenzel, assisted by the Kentucky outfield, clears the bases. I think we got a couple of errors on that ball there. Well, we'll wait for the official scoring. There's at least one, and there may be more. Two of them, okay. See who they're on when we get the chance. Another ball right back up the middle, off the bat of Janicek. That will score Wenzel, the ball gets away. Janicek will hold it first base. That's what we were talking about earlier, Joe. They went back to a four-man outfield, a fan out. Wait a minute, he's calling them out. Well, evidently somebody missed the bag at second. There has been a call on the field. At any rate, the third out has been called, so we will get the ruling on it when we return for you. But Joe, quickly, we'll give you the totals in the inning here. Joe, that ball's got to go back to the mound. Six runs in the inning for Milwaukee. On seven hits, there were two Kentucky errors and one man left. So the score after six complete innings of play is Milwaukee 17 and Kentucky 11. A woman with high blood pressure has... Okay, we have an explanation for him. We're gonna have to make a change now. What they ruled was that the ball that was lined in the center field hit the runner. So he is automatically out. So credit the batter with a base hit. Uh, Janicek, credit him with a base hit. But take one run away from Milwaukee. So the totals in the inning were five runs, seven hits, two errors, and they leave one man stranded. So in, instead of a 17 to 11 score, it is 16 to 11. Let's uh, see if we can pick it up, Joe. That ball there hit the runner now. Gets by the by pitcher. The pitch. There it is. It just hit him off the side of his heel. Just tipped him on the heel. So the score is 16 to 11, not 17 to 11, and we'll see whether that ends up costing Milwaukee anything as the game goes on. But right now, Kentucky with their last run at right-hander Rick Weiterman as we move to the top half of inning number seven. Let's see if we can see that again, John. It's pretty difficult to see. Now, it got by the pitcher. Didn't look like it hit him. It, uh, Hard to tell I from wish there. We had, yeah, it's pretty difficult with the angle we took there. I wonder if we could stop it back a little further. Well, we'll check it out and see if we can pick it up. At any rate, Chuck Winders, Dave Whitlock, and Phil Schreier, the scheduled batters for Kentucky, as they are down now by five at 16 to 11. Top half of the seventh, their last run at Weiterman and Milwaukee in this, the third game of the World Series of Professional Softball. What it amounts to, Joe, is the umpires are on the ball. They're really hustling tonight. In that case, well hit, but Higgins drifting back as it measured, and there's one guy. In that case, Wenzel was on the ball, or the ball was on him. One of the <laughs> <laughs> you suppose a runner would ever admit it? No, never. No. <laughs> Show me the shoe polish on the ball, right? <laughs> With white shoes, that's tough. One gun, nobody on here at the top of the seventh. Last chance for Kentucky. Whitlock the batter, and he pumps that one into right field. So Kentucky's still alive. They need base runners. And that'll bring the veteran Phil Schreier to the plate. He is one for three tonight. Got a base hit in the second inning. Hey. And a 
good close ball game till Milwaukee came up with those five runs in the sixth inning. But don't forget, lest you tend to think this one is over, that Kentucky at one time had a six-run lead over Milwaukee at seven to one. And Milwaukee battled back. They now have the lead. See what Kentucky can do about it. These two teams have both battled back all night, John. Oh, this is a real ball game here. I. This game isn't over by no means. Far and away the best game of the series. 1-1 one, one pitch to right. Wagner there and he makes the catch. So there are two in the well. That'll leave it up to Dave Bear. Bear came in to play right field when Jerry Fritz had problems out there. On the year, a 281 hitter. One homer and 12 RBIs. This will be his first at bat in the series. A lot of pressure for him first time up. He represents the last hopes for Kentucky in this game. Takes a call strike. Just like in baseball, Joe, they're five down last inning. Center field. It should be it. In the well. Good ball game. Higgins makes the catch. The boys from Milwaukee come out to congratulate each other on their victory for Kentucky in the seventh inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and they leave a runner. The final score, Milwaukee 16, Kentucky 11. We'll have a wrap-up in just a moment. Well, the final score again, 16 to 11. Milwaukee over Kentucky. Here are the totals in the ball game. 16 runs, 18 hits, five errors for Milwaukee. 11 runs, 14 hits, and four errors for Kentucky. So Milwaukee with a two games to one lead and the best five out of nine series playing here at uh, Jake's Field in Lannan, Wisconsin. They got the leg up right now, John. Oh, boy, I'll tell you, a lot of strategy in that ball game. This is probably the finest ball game we've seen yet, Joe. And I think we can look for the same in a second game. And we will have game four of this uh, best five out of nine series coming right up. Kentucky now down by one. They won the first game 15 to five, only to see Milwaukee bounce back last night to take the second game 12 to two. And now Milwaukee, winners of two straight with a 16 to 11 victory here in the third game of the 1979 American Slow Pitch Professional Softball League World Series. Rick Weiderman was the winning pitcher. He is now two and one in the series, and Phil Schreier was charged with the defeat in this one, so his mark falls to one win and two losses thus far in the series. The final score again is 16 to 11 in game three, game number four coming up in just a few moments. On behalf of John Blanchard, 